Okay, so welcome back. We're going to finish up Module 3, Customizing the QuickBooks Environment. This is Part 2 of the Chart of Accounts, which is Section 3. So I wanted to kind of continue going down this list. Now remember when we left off, we had talked about the fact that QuickBooks will actually put in an accounts payable and an accounts receivable account for you. So you won't have to set those up manually. So basically any bills that you enter in QuickBooks that you haven't paid yet will show up in this balance total here. And the same would be true for the accounts receivable. That would be any invoices you've created that had not yet been paid by your customers. So you can always look at the balance total and see if that looks about right. Now, going down the list, the next ones I want to mention are what we call your liability accounts. Now, liability is something your business owes. So a loan, for example, for a vehicle, that's a good example for liability. Sometimes if it's an owner and they put money into the business and they want the business to pay them back at some point, they may enter that as a liability. So what you're going to find is liabilities will fall into one of two categories. They'll be either long-term or short-term. And QuickBooks calls them long-term or other current liabilities. Now typically a short-term or an other current is something you're going to pay off in 12 or 13 months. And the long-term liability is something that's going to be a longer term, like a five-year car note or a 30-year mortgage, those types of things. Now, you're going to notice that in my case, I've got the payroll liabilities and the sales tax payable accounts set up. Now, QuickBooks set those up automatically as I went through the Easy Step interview because I said that I want to turn on the payroll and the sales tax features. So if you think about payroll, if you actually collect taxes from an employee's paycheck, then you have to forward those. The same thing with sales tax. If you collect sales tax from customers when they purchase something, you've got to forward that money. That's why they're called liabilities, but typically those are paid out pretty quickly, and that's why they're considered short-term, or in this case, other current. Let me go ahead and set up a liability for you so you can see how this is done. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a car payment. So I'm going to right-click and choose New. Now, real quick, I just want to mention this. This is a little misleading because it says loan, but if you pick this option, QuickBooks assumes a short-term liability. So if you've got a long-term liability, you want to come down where it says other account types and pick from the list. Now, I can call this anything I want. I'll just say auto payment right now. But in real life, it might be that you want to name it your bank name. It could be that you want to call it car payment. It really doesn't matter what you call it as long as you know what it is. You don't really need this other information, but you do need an opening balance. So you want to get out your statements or either call your bank and find out the amount you owed as of your start date. So let's just say 12500 in this particular case. And when I click OK and then save it, I'm going to see the total I owe for that car payment. Now, you might notice that when you put this in, your opening balance equity is now a negative number. So if you think about it, when we did these other accounts up here, these are positive numbers. But a bank loan is a negative number, so it had to subtract it from opening balance equity. So don't try to change that. That's an accurate picture of how your books look. So you want to go and set up all of your long-term liabilities and your short-term liabilities the same way. Just make sure you have the balance that you owe as of your start date. Now when you make a payment towards the loan, you always pick the account here. Don't pick an expense account because one thing I see all the time which is very wrong is people will make their car payment and they'll put it to an expense account. It is not an expense, it's a liability. It goes back to this because don't you want to see this balance come down? So you'll know how much you owe on your account. Okay, so we got the liabilities out of the way. Let's talk about the credit cards a little bit. Now credit cards are cards your business uses to purchase items for the business. These are not credit cards that customers pay with. You'll want to set up each credit card separately so that you can track the balance you owe on each card. So let me go ahead and set one of those up for you. I'm going to again right click and choose the new option. Notice credit card is one of your choices. So we'll choose that and we'll click continue. 
Now you can call the credit card anything you want. If you wanted to call it Capital One, if you want to call it your bank name, again it doesn't matter. If you're going to call it Visa and you've got more than one Visa account, just put the last couple of digits of the account number at the end of the account name here. Now again, you could put a description if you wanted, but you really don't need that, and you do not need to put your credit card account number here. That's just an informational field. You will need your opening balance. So get out your visa statement as of your start date, and go ahead and plug in that number, and we'll say it's 1521.36 as of our start date, and we'll click OK, and when we save and close, we're going to see that now we can see the balance owed on the Visa card. So when you make your payment to the Visa card, put it to this account. Again, don't break it up and say so much is meals and so much is gas. I'll show you how to do that in a later module. When you make the payment, it goes directly back to the Visa card so you can see this balance go down. All right, let's see, going down the list, cost of goods. Let me just tell you what that is because we don't see one here. If you have a business where you have to purchase materials or supplies or actual items to sell in your business, then that's called a cost of goods. It will actually deduct that on your profit and loss from your income account. So we'll see some of those a little bit later when we start putting some items in here. Now, equity, let's talk about equity for a moment. If you think about it, the word equity means equal. If you're a business owner and you take money out of the business, Technically, that was already your money. You just shifted it from one place to another. We call that owner equity. Now, you're going to see lots of different terms for this. Sometimes you'll see shareholder distribution. That would be an owner draw when you take money out of the business. Sometimes you'll see it called owner equity. That would be when you put money into the business. So let me just show you a way that I see it set up often. And this will actually show you how to set up sub-accounts as well. I'm going to right click and add a new account. This time it will be equity and I'd like to call it owner. And that's all I'm going to do to that. I'm not going to put an opening balance or anything. And notice I'm going to save in new this time. That way I don't have to go all the way back and click new again. Now this time I'm going to create a sub account for owner and I want to call it contributions. Notice I'm going to check sub account of owner and I'm going to save a new so I can put in the next one which is the draws. So this will be when you actually take money out of the business. It will be a sub account of owner. Now I'm going to save and close and show you what it looks like. There you go. So see how these two are indented a little bit? They are sub accounts of owner. So owner contribution is when you put money into the business. Owner draws when you take it out. Now if you go down, you're going to see an income account here. This would be where any invoices that get paid, the money dumps into this because that's income for your business. So if you wanted to have multiple income accounts, you could. You probably don't want to have a lot of these, maybe seven or ten max, but they're going to allow you to break down where the sales are coming from in your business if you wanted to do that. Now, under that, you're going to see all the expenses, and this is probably the largest portion of this list. And you'll see they've got some pre-set up for you, like advertising, they've got automobile, insurance, office supplies. You can kind of see the list here. So let me just throw out a few that I think you're going to want to add. First of all, under automobile, if I wanted to track the gas separate from any repairs and car washes and things like that, I'd want to set up those sub-accounts. We're going to say new. So we can call this one fuel, and I'll say it's a sub-account of automobile. I'm going to save and close, and now you'll see it there. So some other ones you'll want to add under insurance, you probably have different types of insurance. Maybe your company has health insurance, maybe you have general liability, you want to set those up there. They have office supplies, but I noticed they don't often put in office expenses, so that might be something you want to add. Typically under professional fees, I'll see things like the attorneys or the accountants. Under utilities, you'll have your telephone, your gas, your electric. Notice telephone expense is not under utilities automatically. So a lot of times what people do 
is they'll edit this one and they just make it a sub-account of utilities. So you'll see that you need to go in and really set up this list the way you need it to work for your business. Now you're not going to get everything the first time you sit down. So what's going to happen is you'll be working a month from now and you might come across a new one you need to add. But at least if you can get the big ones in now and get started, then you'll be good to go. So this is a couple of videos here on the chart of accounts that you need to really review and get this set up properly. So this is going to wrap up Module 3. So what we're going to do now is go over to Module 4 and start talking about working with our customers and jobs. Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see similar videos, click the subscribe button on the right. I'll see you next week with additional videos.